Good morning, my name is Dave Bodner and hopefully you are at the East Coast Large Scale Train Show and this is a seminar that is about electronics, microcontrollers and trains, electronic gizmos, gadgets, tips, tricks and more and what's new. The reason I put in that what's new is that I've been doing these seminars here for seven or eight years. It's been a long time um, and I frequently spend the first half first hour out of a two-hour seminar talking about an introduction to something called a pickaxe, which is a microcontroller. And I figured, you know what, you've got to be tired of hearing me say that by now. Uh, so I changed things around quite a bit. I'm still going to talk about the pickaxe, but I'm going to go a little bit more uh, technical on you with this one. How many have been to one of my seminars before? And you're still coming back. That's pretty good. Uh, if you have not, and, and you don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to the pickaxe, if you go to trainelectronics.com, that's my webpage, or to davebodner.com, that's my webpage, they're both interlinked, uh, and you go to presentations, there's a link, all the YouTube video, John DeKellis, hi John, from Large Scale Online, is videotaping this seminar, and eventually it will wind up on YouTube. And two years ago, he did an excellent job of editing a video that of this presentation. So if you're interested in the introductory stuff, it's on YouTube. So you don't, don't really need to hear it for a ninth time, I suppose. Okay, uh, being a former classroom teacher, I always have objectives before I start something. We're going to demonstrate various devices and projects that utilize microcontroller operation, some that do not, and hopefully excite you with the possibilities and enable you to begin experimenting yourself. That's my real objective. I'm a teacher at heart. Uh, I'm not trying to sell anything. I don't represent a company. I do sell boards and things for these gizmos, but I don't make any money on them. I, I'm more interested in getting people interested in this stuff. Topics, again, a pickaxe review. What is it? Why use it? How do we use it? There's a new pickaxe chip that I was kind of excited about that we're going to talk about. We're going to take a pickaxe project and do it from start to finish. Basically, we're going to build a controller that will do what's happening to the trolley right now. A back and forth, an auto reverse, if you will. And I'll also intersperse a bunch of tips, tricks, and tools as we're talking. And some new and improved gizmos and gadgets. A little digression. I really like Aristocraft's new PCC trolley. It was a long time coming. I'm from Pittsburgh. That's a Pittsburgh PCC trolley. And I thought that it would be nice to have a PCC trolley operating on a point-to-point, -point, which is what it's doing right now. Uh, unfortunately, it's not double-ended, so it's a little funny having it go backwards, but we'll ignore that fact. There's some problems, though, with what's happening right now. That is operating on something, this little guy here, You'll see it blinking. This is called the blinking auto reverse controller for obvious reasons. When it gets to the end of the track, it stops. Why does it stop? Well, the track has been cut. A diode has been placed across that joint in the track. And diodes are interesting creatures. They conduct electricity, allow electrons to flow in one direction, sometimes called a valve because of that. And when it gets to the end of the track, what happens? It stops. What happens to the lights? They go out, and eventually this little gizmo is going to reverse the polarity. The diode will conduct. It goes to the other end, and then it repeats. But there's some problems with it. Most are based on time, and because they're based on time, if I change the speed of the trolley, my timing gets messed up. I don't like that. The lights are lost at the end, and if you've got some sort of sound device, it's going to die. Most don't support station stops. You understand what a station stop is? If a trolley's going along and stops and continues in the same direction, that's a station stop. Supposedly it's gotten some people. They will support station stops, but then you have to have a sensor of some sort that sends through a wire a signal back to the gizmo to say, do a station stop. So I got thinking about Christmas. So we're going to digress even further. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my annual month-long front yard display. And this is a digression within a digression. And if you see the movie Inception, where the, which was a dream within a dream, so we're getting a little confused right now. Every year, from December 1st through January 1st, I have some sort of train-related display out in front of my house. And I have done such things as an incline. 
There's an incline like this in Pittsburgh, and that ran up and down in front of my house for a month. Most of the time, though, I have been putting a point to point up on that stone railing that you saw at the top there, and I had a train going back and forth. Now, that's problematic. To get a point to point like this to run outside anywhere from 6 to 16 hours a day for 31 or 32 days is no small challenge. First couple times I did it, it drove me nuts. I was out there cleaning the track and going through all kinds of pain to get it to work. Okay, after a few frustrating experiences, and that's a couple years worth, I came up with an idea. Why not take the reversing controller, this, and put it in the Christmas trolley and put high voltage AC on the track? Now, any of you that are familiar with DCC, that's what they do. They put, it's not truly AC, it's pulsed DC, but a high powered, high voltage uh, voltage, let's say 20 volts, 30 volts, whatever it happens to be. And that takes care of the problem with the wheels picking up power from the track. And because I have the intelligence in the trolley, it's always got power to do the motor, the lights, and things like that. So, I put 24 volts AC on the track. Inside of it, I had to add a bridge rectifier, which changes AC to DC, and a capacitor to clean that electricity up a little bit to filter it. I also needed to add something to detect the ends. Because on the DC, when it got to the diode at the end, it just plain stopped. Well, with the AC, it's a little bit tougher. We'll talk about that in a minute. And you know what? It worked like a charm. This past winter, I had the train, the trolley, running that entire month. I had to fix it once. And that's because we had a snowstorm, ice storm. The track got so dirty, even with all that AC on it, it still died. Okay. So we're going to step back one, di one digression to where we were. And this is what I decided to do with the PCC trolley. I decided I could take that same type of controller that was in my Christmas trolley, I could shrink it down, and I could get it to plug into the plug and play socket. This is what I'm talking about right here. I'll pass this around. That's what I came up with. And this is going to lead us into a discussion of what you can do with a pickaxe to do basically the same thing. So if you'll pass that around. Okay. And if you have questions as I'm going, feel free to interrupt. Uh, it utilizes many of the capabilities of the pickaxe and similar microcontrollers. It uses PWM. And those of you that have seen my other talks, PWM is a way of having a microcontroller turn a pin on and off very rapidly to change the brightness of a light or the speed of a motor. It controls relays. and Everybody knows that a relay can be used to change the direction of the train. It has to react to input from sensors and it plugs directly into that plug and play socket. All right, it uses AC power. That's the other interesting thing. I'm going to stop this guy here in a minute. Stop is probably the wrong word. I'm going to pull it. And I'm going to disconnect the reversing device. This is an old Lionel transformer from the year of my birth. It's old. And I'm going to take this little trolley. I'm going to pull out the jumper that Aristocraft supplies when you buy it. It's a jumper that goes into the uh, plug and play socket. And I'm going to put my glasses on. And with a little bit of luck, I'm going to plug this board that I built into that. And with the glaring light and the partial darkness, it's a challenge. I think I got it. I do believe. Okay, we got the power off. We're going to put the trolley on. Well, I did not get it in right. Let me try this other trolley. I have a difficult time getting those things in when I need to do it in a hurry. There we go. It's pausing. If you saw it flashing, it's actually flashing out the version number of the software. And it takes off. Goes along rather nicely. 
Now I want you to notice what happens when it gets to the end of the track. Did the lights go out? And it made noise. It still made noise when it reversed and it's coming back. 